Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another Warno Guide. Today we're going over 8th Infantry, a new division that was just released. We'll just go over the pros, the cons, you know, all the good stuff. First of all, this is an overview of the deck so far, but let's like, let's just get right into this thing. First of all, what do we have here, guys? You have a beautiful infantry tab. I'm just going to start here because this is where it's the meat of the bones are. I'm going to talk about some of the things I bring. First of all, they increased the range of the Sassel Chargers a little bit. They were 100 meters, now they're 175, I believe. Uh, to be fair, though, I don't think they're as worth, though, as the Dragoon Flash. Dragoon Flash, these flames, they have four shots. Just delete enemy squad, especially if they're attached with an a real, like, beefy squad. They run out of ammo really quick, so you may want to keep them with some ammo. But honestly, they, they just pound enemy infantry. Uh, you also got an Engineer Dragoon if you're looking for something a little bit different. A bigger squad, I'd say 10 man, but he does come with a Dragoon shot, so that's really nice. But the meat and the bones is the mech rifles, guys. Mech rifles here, obviously three of the M249. These things destroy everybody in every range. Uh, I mean, what to say? You have an option to bring them one vet, uh, which is no bonus to it, but you only get six of them. Two vet, you lose two of them, but you get 25% chance hit. <clears throat> rate of fire 50% stress resistance plus 25% and you go triple vet chance that's even higher I think double vet is where it's at uh, honestly th hitting those dragoons every single time against enemy vehicles is pretty key to being effective with this unit and that's uh, just my opinion on it uh, you also get these mech rifle laws these things are really good as well it's just an alternative to the mech rifles I think these guys perform a little bit better in CQC 11 men, but the coming of the law though is really nice. It just fires like almost instantaneously, no real time to like uh, like lock on like with the uh, mech rifles. So that that's a huge bonus, and this thing's pretty good. Now the problem is, is what about Jaeger? Where did Jaeger fit in? And to be fair, if you look at the Jaeger law, Jaeger in comparison to the mech law, which you pay an extra 10 points for. I really do not think there's a really big bonus. The only bonus you get with the Jaeger is the Panzerfaust, which is better. But you get less firepower overall so i don't think it's a worth to take right now i hope they change that uh transport wise you don't get anything that interesting you can bring them in these uh this like you know machine gun thing but again pretty you're not really it's not gonna be really that useful i'm gonna be honest with you guys especially out on the battlefield you can get destroyed you get air rifles you're looking for some helicopters get some of the long nice fast squad to get to the front line you also get this uh, another like German unit but again it's just the same dilemma as the other unit it's just why bring that over all the other stuff get military police here uh, what do you get from military police guys you get the beautiful uh, recoilless rifle this thing deletes enemy vehicles really strong small team does the job really well let's get military police and MG uh, that's up to you though I wouldn't bring this though over all the other equipment and then you'll also get your leader type you get engineer leader uh, if you're looking for an infantry to uh, cap something and you also get a Jaeger fewer and then you also get a mech rifles fewer which is probably this one's probably the best one it's pretty big squad in general now logi wise what do you get you get a couple options here of two command vehicles sorry three command vehicles get a helicopter and then 577 this is what i go with or the m151 pros cons this thing is also easy faster but it gets shot by anything it's dead this thing can take a little bit it can take an artillery shot and still survive helicopters are pretty bad stealth in general they always get spotted and they'll get artillery to death so be careful with that uh, i get supply you have a decent amount of supply options you get the helicopter supply Get your hammock here. This thing carries a lot of supply. Supply 2,500. You also get an 800 supply. And then a little bit of option here. And then 3.5 supply truck. And it's just the options here. Nothing real a big difference there. Artillery wise, there's some there's some nice stuff in here. First of all, I get this M10A2. This cannot shoot across the entire map. But it, it can shoot pretty far. And this thing will mess up tanks. It deletes AA. Really strong howitzer. Um, the other one's pretty good too. The M10A9A2. A little bit less caliber. Again, a really strong artillery piece as well. I do recommend availability though is pretty light on this one a little bit better for this one if you don't vet it uh mortars wise mortars really good for smoke right now but they don't seem to be doing that oomph damage to like enemy aa and units i don't really recommend in general mrls is a really good against counter battery i do recommend these actually and they have pretty like, like crazy range they pretty much shoot across the whole map tank wise though you're going to be having patterns. Patterns are, uh, hmm, I'm going to be real, guys. Uh, I think they're terrible and they don't do anything. They get destroyed by Russian tanks and armor. And you can barely pen them. So that's that's all I have to say about that. M181 Abrams, though, really strong. Really cost efficient, I think. 19 penetration. Decent armor. I think it's a really good tank. And I recommend this. It also gets a cheaper alternative. M1, just the M1 Abrams. Less penetration. A lot less armor. But uh, again, still a really strong tank, especially for the cost. You can also vet, vet these up. I recommend bringing them at least two vet and then having at least one tank for spam unvetted. That's what I do. 
You guys, tell me what you guys think about vetting, actually. I'd be really curious about that. Recon-wise, what do you get here? You get your <laughs> awesome, awesome Jaeger German. This is the first time I'm like, yes, Germany is I'm going to take. It's one of the best recon things in the game so far. Really good optics. Um, exceptional optics. Really good infantry squad, too. It'll melt people down. I think this is a really good take. They also got some Rangers here. They come with a little a, uh, AT4CS, the anti-tank rocket. This thing's actually really good. You can sneak up on enemy tanks and uh, key vehicles, knock them out. No Bradley, sadly. You do get a uh, recon helicopter that can forward deploy, which does come with four of the uh, Hellfire missiles. So that's really good if you want to like rush a little bit early and snipe some vehicles. Um, you also get the scout with the machine gun. And then uh, you get these M150s or CVs, whatever you want to call them. Um, and they uh, they come with some ATGMs. And if you want, one comes with a tow. That's just, yeah. And then you get this Jeep that like, gets spotted really easily and dies. Get Rangers. And then you also get some Scouts. So you're looking for even the smaller squad and cheap alternative. But this does come with the transport. It has to. So that's just a note. AA-wise, awesome tab for AA. First of all, you get, you know... Not so great availability, but I would bring three trap rails, three vet. They've really buffed AA. It's really strong now. It'll mess up any aircraft flying over you. Pretty much shoots down three of these. Will pretty much shoot down any aircraft in your vicinity. Pivots. You obviously should bring them for AA. They also delete infantry. They just look at them and they're gone. So I actually do like these a lot. They are radar based, so be careful. You have to turn them off. These are not radar based, so you don't have to worry about sea planes. Uh, you also get an AA plane here with just four Stingers missiles. That's really nice to just deal like a heli rush that's happening. And Stingers, guys. Oh, you should bring Stingers. Stingers are really good. Um, I don't have anything to say about that. Stingers are awesome. I only one vet them, but uh, I I could see people double vetting them too. You only get five of them, though. You also get an option here for the German equivalent. But uh, you may as well not. Nah, I don't know. Like, what's the difference, really? They're almost the same exact unit. It just, just comes with a different gun. Because the, um, I guess the assault rifle is better. That's just preference, though. Helicopter-wise, you have no variety of helicopters. You just got a Cobra and a Tow Cobra. Tow Cobra comes with some uh, tow missiles, but they never really do that much damage. Don't expect them to kill any tanks. Uh, and, yeah, I just have to say, they're really, really fragile. They're really not so good. Uh, that's all I have to say about them. They don't. They can delete infantry, though, pretty well. They come with those Hydra missiles. Those do just, just delete squads. But again, uh, these things are... You gotta be very careful. They get hit by an AAP, so they're gone. Air-wise, though, this is what we need to talk a little bit about. Overall, air tab is pretty interesting. Clusters do not work. First of all, the F-16 clusters, I was like, yes, F-16s, come on. But F-16 guys, these two clusters will throw their bombs and then will do nothing. It just scratches tanks. I don't recommend bringing them at all. I just don't just don't bring them. I just don't think they're good. Maybe they'll change in the future patch, but that's my experience right now. Um, Bomb-wise, you just get the uh, you know nice bomb, HD bomb are really good, actually. This thing will actually delete like big sections of the map. You need to make sure you fire like a little bit behind the enemy infantry units because this bomb like goes so freaking long it'll hit your own guys so be careful with that other than that the f-16 fighter is freaking awesome um it's really cost efficient and i think it's really good it's pretty fragile though so be careful you can get messed i think it takes hits pretty badly like it'll just go down really quickly so be careful with that uh that's all i have to say with the f-16 though it's fast it has a, i think it comes in slower though than the f-15 uh, onto the map so be wary of that but again, a really good fighter, and they're they're pretty cheap to compare to the uh, F-15. So I really do recommend. You get your obviously your A-10 Thunderbolts if you're looking for a little, you know, slower uh, cast plane. But the problem with this is it's really slow, and you're just gonna get destroyed by enemy AA. These aircraft I don't recommend at all. Uh, they're just gonna get destroyed instantly by enemy AA. Like it's that's what they are. The one thing I do recommend, I absolutely recommend, you gotta bring this EF-111A. This thing is a seed plane. It just it's, it has really good survivability. I've had some great experience with it, so I highly recommend it. You guys should definitely bring this in. Anyway, guys, that's all I have to kind of say about this deck. It's a really good deck. It's infantry orientated, for sure, with enough tank support to keep it in the game. I don't know if it's as good as Third Armor. I think Third Armor is a better division overall, but so far, I think it's a really good deck, and it's really fun in certain areas, especially like in infantry combat zones. I think it's great. Anyway, guys, let me know what you guys think about it. Let me guys tell me about veterancy, what you guys think about veterancy. I'd be really curious about that, and I'll see you guys around. Thanks for watching.